everyone, and here is Kelly, Kelly Hampton. Thanks so much, um, everyone, for uh, listening in and joining me here in this um, next installment of Archangel Michael's uh, New Way to See the Stars. It's a continuation of Volumes 1 and 2 in sequential order about the system Archangel Michael is naming Dominion. Um, And for those of you that um, may not have experienced um, may not have experienced the the first two teachings. Um, the, you know the the wisdom I heard from Archangel Michael is very much like star healing intergalactic energy. Certain things are changing in our world, and certain things are being outdated. So as he seems to share. Um, He says, our present astrology system uses an older one. This one will be light years ahead of it. I'm naming it Dominion. So do you know what Dominion means, he asks us, and it means oneness, ascendancy. So it seems perfect, really, that it be introduced during this time um, in our cosmic um, awakening on planet Earth with a strong strong doses of crystalline um, energy to infuse us and help us be in that that realm of pure love. So um, we are going to continue this evening um, and focus on, in the the previous teachings, Michael introduced us to different galaxies, and he, he promises before we're finished with this teaching that there will be about 66 dimensions or galaxies universes, use those words kind of interchangeably as he suggests, before the teaching is complete, it will be, I'll do my best, I don't know if we'll examine 66, or certainly not this evening, but his focus initially here is going to be in 10, for 10 different universes, and, you know, when we um, stretch ourselves maybe even in looking at things that might be beyond our understanding, um, and it 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 can um, force us to look at some things and question things we might have been taught or seen. And hopefully through the teaching, Michael will continue to guide us with his glory and examine some things about our magnificent and vast multi-universes system and do so so that it help, we help dispel fear and embrace more light and more love. Um, he did guide us about some of the dimensions already in galaxies, such as Ostalus, Herculon, he mentioned also in his book, um, 2012 and Beyond, um, as Michael's teaching is from that. You're a star seed if you're from the Palladian or the Herculon galaxy. So Palladian is certainly a universe and a galaxy. Ostalus, some I'd never heard of. Damascus, Celestine, um, Wonderful word there, Celestine. So tonight I am going to very much open myself up like before. Hear much of the information for the first time. Um, Invite us maybe to quiet ourselves, be open, question. Um, And we, as we, as I invoke Archangel Michael significantly for our time here and ask him to uh, share with us his wisdom about a galaxy known as Utopia, and we'll see where that takes us. And if there's, if you'd like to go somewhere else from this point in time, um, you know, so be it. So, um, thanks, um, everyone. And here, here we go. We're just invoking Archangel Michael to guide us, continue our learning and sharing. Grateful this, for this opportunity to do so. Um, and what what would you like to share with us about utopia? Maybe you could describe what its frequency, because the other galaxies you shared, Angel, have a, like a a purpose or a you know a connectedness here on Earth. It's not as though we're separate from these universes. There's new species of plants and animals that are anchors and markers for different 
frequency of a different galaxy and so on. So utopia sounds wonderful. Um, I, we're eager to learn more about it if you could begin. Hey, okay, he's saying, th thank you, one and all, all is one. In our sharing time, I will try to be um, mighty and meek at the same time, just a reflection of all things large and small and all things in between. It is exciting, You're, everyone that might be listening, and those of you that might even listen five, six, seven, eight, nine years, ten years from now, you're on the cusp of the greatest spiritual awakening mankind has ever known. And some would say the cusp has already happened. And I'd say, well, there's layers of ascension, just as there are layers of grids around your planet and layers of etheric frequencies around these different dimensions or galaxies. So it is gives us quite amount of huge pleasure and joy in extending ourselves into this dominion system. It is a system. It's not necessarily just something you read and learn about and do nothing with. Uh, I view it very much before we're finished with the system that it will be something to engage in, very much like you might say astrology is, understanding first. So first we have to lay the platform of understanding before we can sort of connect the dots about even more fully how souls on earth will be using it. And as we briefly mentioned in the teachings before, it's, it is going to be in the not too distant future, the future generations are going to be traveling to different universes. This is not 200 years from now. This is not, this is not a, a, what's he saying? A, magnified, glorified um, vision in the distant future. The travel has already taken place, by the way. Maybe not too many Earthlings to other, other planets and galaxies, but certainly your Earth has been visited for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So it will be a reverse or kind of a complete circle trajectory to, to acknowledge and honor the different light beings, the loving light beings that are on the galaxies. In our examination of the galaxies, we will be examining universes where the light beings are not fully in the light. It wouldn't be a, a full and accurate teaching if, unless we did so, at least touched upon it. As far as utopia goes, we'll move into that. Utopia is a light-based galaxy, and it is part of the fleet of galactic um lights you might say and utopia in terms of earth time uh, light years away some souls might find how many light years these galaxies are interesting um, utopia is a galaxy that exists or sits you might say on the other side of the sun it's about 400,000 light years from planet earth and it's really quite um marvelous in nature, marvelous as all of universe's creations, God's creations, the great significator um, is, are. Um, it is comprised of planets. Um, the planets um, are magnificent in color and purpose and energetic power. Um, to paint something in your minds about what the system looks like, it has three primary planets as I come to know it That at this moment knowing that even galaxies um, can give birth, of course, to new new forms. Um, it happens all the time. But in looking at utopia, let's first describe what the sort of the planets themselves look like for your um, knowingness. Um, the first planet is um, the biggest, and it's not a round planet like you might know those in your solar system, it's actually square. It's certainly not a flat square. It has dimension, but it is a square. And it is recognized um, by its sort of glowing, uh, vibrating, orangish color. And the orangish color is almost translucent at times. It is a planet that does have water. If you're wondering how I could describe it further. It is a planet that um, besides having uh, water, does ha does not have near as much water as your planet Earth does, but there is water upon it, there's desert upon it, there's grasslands upon it. Um, 
it looks in some ways the civilizations that are built there, maybe you're kind of almost imagining Star Wars kind of visuals, um, it is futuristic looking. Uh, there are some of these galaxies that we'll be examining, like the land of the giants, that are quite primitive still. But Utopia has a utopian-esque sort of new age, uh, very modern-looking landscape. It's it's a um, a landscape that some have seen in their vision. Some of you have seen in your travels, in your meditations. Um, some of you telepathically or in visionary other ways have seen these um, crystalline emerald kind of almost like emerald city kind of, um, I'll say, buildings, um, to, for lack of a better word right now. And they're, But they're translucent in nature. They're very, quite beautiful. They're as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than the most beautiful structures on Earth. Uh, things are all relative, he's saying. But that's a brief description. I'll come back to the main planet in just a moment. It has a rings around it, um, and there are, the rings serve a purpose, uh, just as though there are rings around your Saturn that many of you are familiar with. The rings around the first planet of Utopia, uh, there are five, five rings, and they, are, they serve um, different purposes. Um, energetically, the colors of the rings themselves are white, gold, white, gold, and green. Uh, sometimes two of the rings kind of blend in to one another, so you might imagine or know at times that it might be referred to in some of my teaching later as a three-ringed planet, but that's why he's saying. Moving on from the rings of the first planet, the other two are smaller. So the major plant, planets in Utopia, um, they're also square in nature, not a complete square. Again, they have dimension, and they're constantly spinning and moving. Nothing is static, so don't think static. Think movement. Um, and the colors of them vary. They're variable in color. Both of those smaller planets are about half the size of the largest one. You could think of the largest one as the mother or the father. It almost looks that way to us, as though the two siblings were born, and they're younger but in nature. They are genetically or cosmically younger, um, that's partly uh, a reflection of their size, but not fully and totally. All three planets, as I come to see it, are inhabited by humanoid-type forms of loving light beings, and they um, very much wish, as many of the other light beings on these other galaxies, want to be asked to be um, acknowledged and brought forward, uh, much has been spoken of about the Palladians. Um, they're sort of the first wave centers of um, rising much of the consciousness, responsible for, you might say, dropping hundreds of thousands of star seeds onto your onto your planet that are popping open and have been popping open for, oh, about the last 40 years. Um, the biggest downloads of star seeds um, have come in the last five to six to seven or eight years. Um, also, Herculon is contributing to that effort. Um, I, I yet myself to have seen any star seed that is from Utopia because the distance it is away from Earth, but it does not mean that there isn't a correlation and a healing uh, purpose in knowing the major frequencies, um, just as when we get to Jupiter and acknowledge that you know, the Jupiter consciousness is very large in mankind's and instrumentally large, I might say, um, in mankind's um, evolving uh, position um, in the cosmos. And so we'll talk about the harmonic code to connect with utopia. As we've talked about some of the harmonic codes to, you know, work and kind of step into this arena and connect with the frequencies of a galaxy that is probably so unimaginably far away that um, maybe some of your minds are not quite even sure how a light year is measured. But without going into sounding like a physicist, let's just say it's on the, on the farthest side of the farthest side. So in my sharing of these galaxies, I'm not necessarily choosing to kind of introduce them to everyone in order, like from where they are to Earth, um, 
the galaxies themselves and those beings on it are sort of lining up and asking. So there isn't any relevancy. Nothing is more important than something else. This is just an open sharing. Hopefully it's, a, again, a stretching of a consciousness or just a validating for some of you because we know some of you, again, have visited um, different aspects of source energy. And as I've said before, and we, as I speak for some of the archangels, if not all of them, and some of the higher council, there's nothing alien about anything I'm going to be sharing. There's nothing alien on earth. There's no alien. There's no alien. I, again, I say the only thing alien might be one's thinking. So as we move into a description of these loving light beings that have a humanoid form, that live on all the planets of utopia, um, there's generally a feminine energy embodied. Um, there's other galaxies that are more masculine in nature, aspects of God, force, creator, but you so utopia is more of a, of a feminine frequency. And the humanoids that um, live there, a description, if you want to picture something in your mind, um, they do they do have a male and a, a female and sort of a androgynous um, sort of, System. And the beings themselves have um, loving um, eyes. Um, human beings, you may say, well, angel, human beings can have love in their eyes too. And I'd say yes, some will certainly. But they have, um, they're almost embedded, if it were, with um, some rainbow type energy that emits from them most of the humanoids in Utopia. When you look at their eyes, it's not confusing, but you might think it does. It looks like some of those swirly, googly eyes that you might, where the colors spin around, and then you're asked to, like, look at something spinning and look away. Well, there is sort of a hypnotic effect to the eyes of the loving light beings in this uh, dimensional plane, but certainly not to hypnotize anyone. It's just um, the way that the creator created them, and they uh, have a lifespan quite a bit longer than human beings, um, anywhere, well, well, I would say it's about three times the length of what on earth, what your average lifespan of someone on earth is. It's about three times as long. Uh, that's partly gravitational, but it's also partly because their consciousness is in such a vastness that they've never known deprivation. They've never known lack. They've never known fear. It's these things that has um, sort of genetically altered, partially um, genetically altered the human evolution um, in, in one form known as, as aging. Uh, there are universes that we will examine before we're finished with looking at the system where there's an ageless, timeless, uh, no, no what you might call a death component that the, that the, the light beings themselves just keep sort of re recycling and regenerating themselves without uh, within and they and they do have humanoid type bodies so um, it is in some ways we hope a quite fascinating concept that it's really not outside of the trajectory of those on earth to embody the same um, high frequency of, of love and the dismissal of fear for if for no other reason than to um, rid one's body of disease. You cannot have disease in the human body when you're fully loving, fully totally loved, and with and when the planet that you're resting upon, living and breathing upon, um, is in a place of position that supports you. And Mother Earth is still healing from the wounds that were inflicted upon her. Um, she is going to be. She was reborn once. She'll be reborn again, and I feel as though I've been asked to share that she'll be reborn a third time before sort of the final belching um, of the release of denser frequencies will be there. And that last final belching of Mother Earth is going to cause a cosmic rift. And a cosmic rift is, as it was described to me by higher masters than myself, is going to sound like a sonic boom. And... Um, the sonic boom will be heard on Earth. It will be heard in other regions as well. But for those of you on Earth, we anticipate that the sound will be heard 
um, by, oh, I would guess two-thirds to three-quarters of the souls on your planet. In other words, a very large proportion of individuals will, um, you know, when the sound of that, what I'm calling a sonic-type boom, um, it's a time of great celebration. It's a time for nothing else. In fact, I would say stand in applause and embrace your brother and sister because it's a sign from the Creator that Mother Earth has cast her last upheaval, uh, sort of remove the last splinter of anything that has wounded her from any consciousness, any dimension, any dark forces, and we will be talking about them at some point in our teaching. So um, back to utopia and the utopian existence. So their lifespan is... Um, longer presently than the souls on earth it's for the mainly the reasons as i say the consciousness is is high um very high they're quite capable of of many things so is the human being um but by distinction do they do they have a face do they have skin do they have hair tell us more about what they may look like generally the heights of those light beings in the utopian galaxy um are about, in your earth terms, they're about six foot tall to about seven and a half or eight feet tall. Um, the women uh, tend to be uh, smaller than the male component. Uh, the androgynous souls, by nature, there's, it's not as though um, they're thought of as a different class citizen or something. There's no judgment here. Um, there's nothing except equality and pure, pure love. They have uh, light ships and a fleet of quite sophisticated craft that um, would probably astound and astonish even the most uh, um, imaginative or knowing. Um, those of you that have seen light uh, ships, um, seen the mother ships uh, particularly, um, if, if one were to ever imagine them, if not see them yet, there's a beauty about many of them. There's a majesty. Um, the majesty comes from the form, um, I think. Um, one would say there's beauty in anything if you, inter you turn your attention to it. So I would ask some of you, if not all of you, to think about um, even these light ships, these crafts that transport the beings from galaxy to galaxy um, as things of, of beauty. Um, as I say, many of them have colors beyond recognition. They, they, they operate in a spectrum of light outside of your own. So if you wanted to imagine some of the, um, the ships that are in the utopian galaxy, they're of such a high spectrum that not even some on the animal kingdom that have solar implants in their eyes for this purpose um, you know, can can see them, but they're most beautiful, most auspicious. And the before I maybe describe the the, the ships any any further, the the purpose these other galaxies, every galaxy, I would like to highlight at least one main purpose about knowing about their consciousness. It's sort of like um, you know saying that uh, Mercury has a frequency of this and that, and so in astrology terms, you might say, well. Saturn has the uh, planetary um, equivalent or the characteristics of um, generosity. And Saturn can be responsible for bringing out the best and the worst in people at the same time. Uh, it's the same kind of thing in a way that could be said in your astrology system when, when you might examine the different planets in your own solar systems. Um, when one might say, well, what are the characteristics of the moon? Or what are the characteristics of uh, Pluto? And they all have characteristics. So I, I suppose it's the characteristic or characteristics of Utopia, the main planet primarily that I'd like to be sharing. And so and just as we expand and identify these things, again, exploration is part of space, so right now we're exploring. And so eventually we'll have more of a an outline kind of pinned in front of us um, to project ourselves more fully into working 
okay, with these frequencies and with the light beings that are on, on them. You might say, well, Angel, before you move to the characteristics, um, are there other forms of life? Do the, is, are there things like uh, plants and animals like we have here on Earth? And I would say to you, yes, there is a uh, utopian type existence almost as if the word implies, if not directly suggests, and that is um, there is a a harmony amongst all, and many of the galaxies have the same harmony, but in terms of creation, it's it's in many ways all the all the all that the God mind had created, many of these species of animals you'll find in on on and in utopia, in the utopian realm. Um, that would be anything from um, gypsy moths that are purple and pink with gold uh, dust, gold dusty little antennas on the end, uh, probably about a thousand different types of those. And then we could talk about moving along to animals of all types, all descriptions. Some of them in your minds might look a mythical, uh, the woolly mammoth does reside at times in the utopian uh, galaxy. Some of these mythical creatures, you might say, if you've studied them or believe this or not believe that or whatever your belief may be, but many of them have originated from galaxies outside of your own. Uh, so why not just embrace the beauty of, of all, even even the planets that we say might be in darkness? or temporary darkness. So it's love that will embrace and change everything. So the woolly mammoth um, that lived on the planet Earth uh, originated in um, the utopian galaxy. And that's how uh, the great creator, when we use the word seeded, seeded, he's saying S-E-E-D-E-D, seeded, um, it, the seeding came from utopia eons and eons ago. Not all of the galaxies, by the way, did seeding on Earth. Uh, they did not. Um, only only a handful of galaxies actually were um, involved in the seeding uh, uh, on your Mother Earth. Uh, so, but utopia was um, involved in this. Besides. Um, the woolly mammoth, to give you some idea of the magnificence, Mo mostly it's infinite, infinite in um, uh, color, and the animal kingdom far outweighs by by chance or by stance. He's saying um, the humanoid forms. In fact, um, about three to one, it's it's animals in the animal kingdom over humanoid forms. So that's about the ratio. So imagine um, Pegasus. He resides here quite often. Um, imagine the other types of unicorns with great beauty and grace. Imagine a uh, purple and white lion. Imagine before, you see, before some of the animals were on your earth plane, God experimented and as I come to know it, God, mind, source, energy, the creator, um, can you imagine there's infinite, even in your world today, there's thousands of eels of different nature. So it's just an extenuation of many of, I would say, even the original animal species that were intended to be for Mother Earth before there was interference. That's why you might hear some things like along your lives, like the utopian existence, or Earth was to have been utopia, or Earth was to have been nirvana, same type of conceptual thing, full of not just the animal kingdom, but the plant kingdom, uh, loving beings, the most uh, magnificent um Oh, um, purity of love and beautiful sounds um, emanate from really the core of the heart being. Uh, in other words, humanoids in utopia um, do not need to pick up an instrument like you would on earth and play to create great beauty. Uh, they 
have it within their bodies. It's sort of like they carry a tuner, you might say. The simplest way, as I see it, is to describe it as a tuner. So they harmonize some of the most beautiful tones. Uh, I think mankind's, they, they, their tones they make rival, he's saying, the, the seraphim. If you can imagine, if those of you have heard the seraphim ever sing, it's their, their vocal and harmonic abilities and tones that they create are, you know, literally beyond measure in, in, in great profoundness. And it's, it emanates peace. And so, um, besides the, the sounds of, that are there, there are smells. Um, that are present, much like your planet, only magneti- magnetized times a hundred, you might say, so that on any given moment there are, are waves and waves and waves of healing um, scents that sort of drift across. Um, they they look like colorful strata, sort of in an energetic way. Um, very beautiful strata, not unlike you might say a rainbow. It's kind of similar to that, but it's um has a a smell quality. So um as I see it, the humanoids that live there have developed um some characteristics and let's call it maybe their what they're contributing to Earth's um paradigm shift and your mother earth's growth. And so they were responsible for doing some seeding of the animal kingdom, um, particularly in your parts of Mother Earth, they'd be known as Southeast Asia, uh, where there were some spotted leopards that were originally seeded. Well, those leopards originally uh, sort of, I guess I'll use the word, came from, uh, for lack of anything else, um, this particular planetary system. They also did seeding in the animal kingdom on the Amazonian rainforest as it pertains to a particular type of plants that were created. Um, initially on planet Earth, uh, you can abide, consider, uh, test me on my words. I honor all, all, all forms of, of honoring, he's saying. But the uh, plants, there was, it was barren. There was nothing. There was barren. It was a barren Earth. And so, um, you know, loving light families, um, in harmony under God's dominion as that plant life, animal life, human life uh, be created. And largely it was done by a process known as seeding. And so um, back to the Amazonian rainforest in there. So the species of trees um, would be like succulents um, that came from uh, utopian consciousness, um, consciousness efforts directly. Um, uh, so many of the rubber trees, the waxy leaves, the plants that are in that particular region, you can give thanks in your world if it so moves you um, to those from this particular galaxy and as as well as for the the spotted leopard also the hyena. Originally there were other there were other forms and colors of hyenas um on Earth and again they were it was sort of uh a test to see if mankind's consciousness could allow and would allow them to thrive and grow and we know in many instances um what is what has occurred. Um but regrowth is occurring. So you can continue if you if it moves your minds and hearts to know that Utopia is continuing to seed um, planet Earth and restoring and replacing many of the um, animal kingdom and the plant species that have died out. That's that's why when we share that there are new higher vibrational uh, species coming to your plant, just just as though humans have, just as though animals are. Um, just as plants are, just as the mineral kingdom, they're continuing to come um, and be seeded from these some various of these different galaxies. And the galaxies that are not chosen to do the seeding or did not sort of volunteer to do the seeding, uh, they have other directives. They have other light-loving um, um, purposes also, and we'll examine those sort of one by one as we kind of try to unravel a mystery if you find the stars and the planets in the universe is vast unknowing. <clears throat> Much like some of you might 
think heaven has a vast unknowing. You know, what what is it really like in this vastness? Well, that's part of my intent is to draw the picture and draw the correlation and um and the significance really about and the wonder about co creating realities that exist in different planes. So um back to utopia. So the 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 beautiful smells themselves float across the planet from time to time in these beautiful layers of color. The besides seeding in particular places of your um planet Earth, uh one of the characteristics um of the utopian consciousness is the seed of forgiveness. And so it's not just creation uh that the utopian um squadron uh contributed to um but also a seed of another type and it carries a vibration and if you're interested energetically the vibration of forgiveness has a 1.1 to 1.2 kind of harmonic ratio so those of you that know some things about music and tenor and temper will maybe get a bit more out of it than that um but in energetic terms and color, in a different way besides the harmonic code, there's a color code for the seeds of forgiveness. And the seeds of forgiveness, um, color-wise color, color wise or energetically, if you looked at one, and I'll describe something more about them in just a moment, but if you're imagining with your beautiful and creative imaginations, um, the seed of forgiveness has a purple center, um, resonating quite likely with the I am consciousness of the violet flame, many of you know. Um, surrounding that violetness, um, there's a white sort of ring, let's say. The seed isn't exactly a round seed, but in your mind you could think of it um, as such. Um, there are different shapes, by the way. We just use the word seeded to kind of bring it into your mind and, and understanding that a seed is something that grows. But the shapes of the seeds themselves vary. Um, um, but back to the color. Um, so uh, besides the violet consciousness that is in the middle of the seed, the, there's an outer white, call it a ring, and then there's a, uh, a sort of a very, in your visual minds, a very decorative um crystalline sparkly almost uh shooting sparks so almost imagine like kind of holding a little um fireball um of of goodness and light that's that's what the seed of forgiveness uh, looks like and it was the utopian reality with uh the with god mind that asked that planet earth be actually literally seeded, and the seeding was done you know, almost in an instantaneous uh, moment. Um, unlike, I, I was giving some examples of where these, where the animal forms uh, ro- rose from on, on logistically or uh, regionally on Earth. The seeds of forgiveness were scattered, of course, everywhere. Uh, at, at the time of the initial sharing of the vibration. Um, why wouldn't they be? I mean, he's just saying they were, um, it was done in an instantaneous moment, um, working with God mind um, at the center. And um, that's how it was. Um, let me sort of digress for just a moment and, or tie things, expand and say that um, over time, mankind's consciousness um, and was infiltrated with some other galaxies of not so pure intent. Um, And so they sort of make it simple. They kind of gobbled up or dispersed or dispelled or sort of got rid of many of the seeds of forgiveness um, by their ruling authority because at that time in cosmic um, time, uh, they they felt they had the authority to just almost for fun um, let's overtake and see what other galaxy we can invade. And so part of that invasion, as I come to be taught, Michael's saying, is the, as I say, the taking away. It was done in a variety of different ways, a very sophisticated, uh, almost very magical 
ways, you might say. Um, but nevertheless, the end result was very much the same, that ha- about half of the seeds of forgiveness uh, that were, let's say, showered or shared with your world from utopia um, were uh, transmuted and they lost their power. So rather than the utopian consciousness of forgiveness being totally and fully one of the consciousnesses of on earth as its frequency, as its floor, you might say, um, it was only partially laid. And when anything is partially this, partially that, there's room for something else to come in. And so that's kind of sometimes referred to uh, as, as the, the schism or the schism, depending on how you want to say that word, they split. And so, um, so the split itself is an interesting uh, concept. Um, but we will examine a bit more deeply later. Um, but in coming kind of coming back to utopia and uh, why we feel it's useful to be aware of some of these things, useful because. Um, Awareness will be coming to your planet in a greater way that there are loving light beings and it's not in the very distant future. And so part of the intent is to become familiar with things unknown to you. Uh, Familiarity can dispel fear. Uh, It can dispel doubt. It hopefully in many ways will enrich your appreciation for our source energy about how infinitely infinite I keep using the word magnificent, Michael, saying, holy behind, holy, good behind, good, best behind, best, uh, wondrous behind, wondrous. Uh, so, so much majesty. Um, so, it's, if you're, to, to some way we say, um, why did I make the statement that some of the astrology systems on your planet are are losing uh, a potency because they are being outdated uh, in some ways. Uh, some of you will uh, find that you're still studying uh, the stars and planets in the way, in the systems that you know them, which would be fine and well. Um, others of you are hungering and know that there's more than just that. Um, and so that's part of my intention uh, or the statement about likening the study of in a greater detail than I feel has been done in one sort of big block of sharing. Um, In the system, as I say, dominion means ascendancy, so it is time for it to be realized. Um, So back to our our colony um, in Utopia, this utopian uh, colony. Um, uh, If I pick out something uh, else to extrapolate here, um, bees um uh different kind of different bees than the species of bees on your planet but uh, similar in many ways um the pollination of bees um on utopia um gave rise to um a significant heat increase at one time in the history of that planetary system um to the point that it was like too much heat, like too much sun on a sunny day if you've been outside too long. And so um, it was decided by council members high near the seat of the feet of God that um, some of the bee population should be distributed to help dis- redistribute the heat, too much warmth. And so uh, that was actually with intent um, colonization of, of bees. In fact, you might some of you might find this an interesting sort of tidbit, Michael saying, that a farm of a honeybee exists in about 59 of the 66 galaxies that I see presently um, in this sort of dominion, in this ascendancy of all that is. Um, it's quite a an overwhelming number and concept even yet to me, um, knowing and understanding Um, the divine wisdom behind the creation of so many bees um, and the power that the bee itself carries in pollinating, um, really literally helping also 
transmute fear and and spread seeds, um, seeds of consciousness I'm talking about now. Um, At one time and still on Utopia, there is a, I would say, a ginormous um, version of your honeybee, and it's about the size of a uh, small elephant. So we didn't really talk about the size scale of uh, the animal kingdom yet on Utopia, and I'd like to just at least touch on it briefly now to talk about not only the the creations uh, that are living and thriving there, but the size, you know, of, of all sizes, all magnificence, all working together, all working in harmony. It's a very sophisticated, um, multi-unilateral sort of system. The telepathy is not done with the human voice or the communication. It's done with a form of telepathy, mainly through these the eyes that I described earlier. Um, within the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom have um they have a different ocular sort of lens to to view but they do have a viewing uh portal i guess i would call it a viewing portal um sort of different than the animals on earth so for example the um polar bear um on the utopian counterpart of a polar bear um in that consciousness doesn't have two eyes like on earth it has sort of one big eye but it's not threatening, um, and I hope in your hearts and minds it's not threatening to you. It's uh, an extension of the creator. Um, some some of the animals are very similar. Uh, they may have the same four legs. They may have the same kind of a hair, a tail, uh, things of this nature in Utopia. Uh, there is certainly some of the sameness there, um, but in that sameness there's also an elevation energetically. Again, these these um light uh life beings have never known fear so by nature they have a more glow about them you know it's it's not a whole lot different than if you run across someone that's always smiling it's a glow right they're still a human but then you come across someone that is has a frown on their face so there's that spectrum uh on earth but yet in this particular galaxy and some of the others, utopia, right, perfection. Um, so they have a, a a theoric almost quality about them, although they do have what you might call um, bodies. Um, and the bodies can change and shift. And um, So it's a very busy place. If I'm uh, describing it initially here to everyone, um, fair enough, Michael's saying, it's a busy, thriving community in total and complete harmony, full of creation of all things large and small and all colors and all scents and all sounds. Almost just exactly like where the word utopia came from. And they were responsible for the seeding that I've mentioned. Um, I also feel to just acknowledge um, some other uh, work that's presently going on. Um, and then share with you the harmonic code for anyone that would like to uh, connect with those on Utopia. And then there's a tone as well. So I'd like to present the tone. The harmonic code will be a number. Um, but the So back to the point, though, before this, of what's going on presently in this thriving community. Uh, they continue to work on advancing your planet um, forward, uh, not just by seeding any longer, but by working with... Uh, Um, different um, galactic fleets, you might say, um, to help find solutions for things with technology, um, to help um, Mother Earth heal from the digging of the iron ore and the gold that was mined from her. And So they're working ethereally as well. So let me give you an example, if I can do this now, about how some of you, many of you, all of you, one of you, it makes no difference, but how how if it moves you to open your wings as alchemists and support uh, this interconnectedness of all, all the, mul- you're a multidimensional being, so it's sort of time to wake up multidimensional humans, he's saying. So um, in that in that statement I was saying that um, if it if it moved you to know or say the tones, say a tone um, that I will share in just just a moment here of Utopia. Um, you can also 
help your planet um, by making the same cone or excuse me code or tone, and they are working particularly um, with eradicating and erasing the dysfunction that was the iron ore, particularly the iron ore that was taken from Mother Earth in a way. If I suggested to you that there, of course, there is knowledge that your mother could have supplied mankind on Earth in ways that wouldn't have disrupted her soil or her water at all or her air. Everything was totally there to be ever-giving, ever-forgiving, ever-flowing. And then came the schism. And so... To, they're continuing to work right now at this given moment um, in ways to educate mankind and actually help mankind with the placement of some very high aware frequency, um, again, to heal where the iron ore was taken from Mother Earth. And you say, we well, you don't care about iron ore, angel. Uh, we don't care about this. And I'd say, well, I honor those of you that may be thinking that. I do, he's saying. Um, but it's not just iron ore. It goes into layers of rock and formation and things of this nature. So I say to you, because the Mother Earth has been dug at, dug at so long and so hard in a variety of ways, if someone uh, of a God mind, God mind, didn't sort of step in and say, well, we'll take care of that. We'll volunteer to work on that. Um, much of your planet would have crumbled by now. It had been crumbled like a cookie. And there's still the potential that parts of the mother will crumble. Not not said with uh, authority, he's saying. Uh, but it, I said potential. But it's unlikely to happen because you have multidimensional sources um, he- helping mankind on earth and so they're doing this energetically almost sort of night and day that they 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 some of you may be interested they can send these like uh, i'll call them an energy pancake so you could imagine it in your mind visualize it you're visualizing beings so it looks like a pancake um one side is sort of a copper-esque kind of metal it's not really copper like on earth but there's different metals in these other planetary systems of course And so it's a liturgic, he's saying, it's like a liturgical metal, kind of like copper on one side. The other side is more like a bronze and golden bronze and metal alloy. So that's the pancake. It looks like a little little disc in terms of energy energy. And in many ways they just sort of sort of gently lay the disc on um some you might even call them uh streams. Okay, streams, almost like an air stream on Earth. And they they gently kind of float down and around. Again, it's not a linear world where they're up above you necessarily. All things can be seen from a different perspective. But the two sided disc, when it lands on Earth, that's what they're they're still they're still doing presently now. Um, is continuing to keep these fissures um, from turning into bigger fissures in Mother Earth for the support of all who live within her, on her, above her, and beyond her. So moving on now to the numeric code, should you wish to connect with the frequencies of Utopia, the number code to do so is called the harmonic code. Many of you are enlightened about harmonics uh, they can be colors, they can be numbers, they can be tones. But the, I'd like to just present it's kind of the simplest version of connecting with utopia because everything has infinite knowledge and potential. The codes themselves of utopia, there's a code, for example, for the utopian main mother planet. There's a different code to connect with the, um, he's saying the, uh, magnificent, ginormous uh, bumblebee variety. There's a different code to um, connect with um, the feminine humanoids and so on. So I'm just going to give the like the global consciousness harmonic code. Um, and just like anything, working with any type of energy, a code is energy. 
um, even if you don't feel it. So if you're not used to working with harmonic codes, um, use them with moderation. So if it moves you, for example, many of you are quite practiced by nature of your elevatedness, um, and so you energetically can handle high, high uh, ascendancy kind of work. So it won't affect your physical earth body. Others of you, if you overuse a tone or a code or any any type of, of energy, you might say it's depleting for you. So um, recommending moderation. So the simplified code, a harmonic code, would be 999 nine, Four, three, two, one. Michael's saying, I made it as simple as I could. Okay? So that's that in your visual mind, uh, you say, how, well, how would I use it? I'm completely new to this angel, but I'm intrigued. I, I, I would like to, you know, be, be more of service. And so I would say you could state the number code out loud as I shared it uh, with you. Uh, you could write the number code. You could even sort of draw it in the, what you might say, air and sort of blow it. Um, and let the winds of forgiveness take it where it needs to go. You can sort of set the intent or, or no intent. Um, so that, that's the, those are the most common ways of working with harmonics. The tone to connect with the utopian mother planet that I promised I'd be sharing in our time here, uh, I'll pass it through her now. If you want to practice the tone, by all means, any practice, if you falter, and the tone isn't exactly right, do not despair. You'll be uh, awakening a sleeping giant somewhere else. So that was Michael's sort of um, playful joke, um, humor, I suppose. So the tone, I'm ready when you are. Please, the tone. So he says, just deepen, quiet yourself, go to your center, deepen your 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 vocal qualities. Let's try it again. This time I made it a little more melodic. I did that for a reason. So that little shift in the melody or the tone at the end encompasses all the planets. So you see everything is just infinite in its expansiveness. And that's that's the main message that I have for those of you that have chosen to join in, and that is human beings are limitless. We may be talking about... Um, something was taken from or something is being helped and elevated still and it's so we know earth is might be a work in progress you might find yourselves as a work in progress but there's limitless potential in in every living being no matter what their source no matter where they're seated no seated pure creation whatever your belief may be there so you have the opportunity in every given moment of every given day to deep dig deep into the well of human potential, which is also limitless. Um, the Some of you on your planet already know of the uh, rainbow diamond and Antillean children that can conjure something up and it simply manifests. Um, that's how it was all meant to be, totally, fully, and totally, and always. So find that place. Try to find that um, wisdom. Some of you might find that you you strengthen that idea and belief about your limitless potential by connecting with these galaxies that we're sharing with you. Uh, that's part of what can occur when 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 light beams meet light, or you might say the moss goes to the light and the flame. Um, it two columns of light are more powerful than one. So you're streaming consciousness, and streaming consciousness extends in all directions. So um, what you're emitting back is your, your love. So it's, it's not necessarily a one-way flow. But all I'm saying is uh, you can rise into your 
to your original glory and the glory that you have right now, even if you're not of a harmonic higher DNA strand. Soon everyone on your planet will be. That's why I feel as though immersing everyone of any age um, in this teaching or some of it about what you can be doing is only going to help further your understanding, I feel, we feel, I've been asked to share, um, the 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 depth that you're loved. I think I'll end with that. To the depth of our love and to the depth that each of you are loved. The universal God mind is ever present. Till we meet again, friends, to be continued. There's plenty more where this came from, Michael saying. Be blessed, be well, be gracious, be kind and loving to yourselves and your fellow man, knowing that great, great, great goodness still lies ahead. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.